Hello, this is Mrs. Bobby, and this is Lesson 2, Module 6. This work can be found on S11 if you are in the Eureka Math series. Um, other than that, this will help you learn about uh, dot plots. So if we look at a dot plot, uh, a dot plot is a statistical display that uh, each dot represents whatever it is placed above. So for instance, here we're talking about vertical jumps for um, some basketball players. So we hear, see here that this is a 32 inch vertical jump and that is one person can do that. Whereas here at 33, we have two dots here. And then we have 34, which is one, 36, which is two, 37, which has three, so on and so forth. So uh, normally you would see a list of numbers and you would then be taking those numbers and placing the dot where it would go. So today we're not going to be making the dot plot. We're actually just going to be interpreting what the dot plot has. So what statistical question do you think could be answered using these data? So we could say what statistical question. Now remember, in order for it to be a statistical question, uh, it, the answers need to vary. It can't just be a one question, um, one answered question. So we think about a statistical question that you could answer for this. We could say something um, along the lines of, uh, let's see, uh, if we were to ask what was the height of the highest vertical jump by a player, that would not be a statistical question because we can actually find that data. Um, so with the height of the vertical jump by a player, if we look at this dot plot, we would say the highest jumping person would be at a 43 vertical inch jump, whereas the lowest vertical jump by a player um, would be 32. So looking at that uh, statistical question, um, you are going to come up with one when you work with your groups. But if you look lower on the page, you're going to see something that could probably answer that question. We don't know the names of the players on this, um, but we could say uh, what teams did the majority of the 38 inch jumps come from because these are representing um, NBA players. So we could ask like the statistical question of what teams did these jumpers come from? Uh, that could be something we could put. And then you're gonna come up with your own during class today where, where is the middle jumpers from? Like what NBA team? That could be because there's going to be multiple answers there. So what is the most common vertical jump? So the height that occurs the most. So when you're looking at a dot plot, if you're looking at one to see which one represents the most, you are looking for the tallest stack of dots. So when we're looking at the tallest stack of dots, it's not necessarily in the middle. It's just looking for the one that's the tallest. And if we look at this, stat, this data set, we see that the most often would be the 38 inch jump. How many players jump the most common vertical jump? So we take the information we just had from 38 and we see how many players actually jump that. So we literally go up and we count. And we will get 10. How many players jumped higher than 48, 40 inches. So we need higher than 40. So if we need higher than 40, that means we cannot include 40 because it has to be higher than it. So we have to be higher than 40. So how many people jumped higher than 40? We count those dots. So we see one's at 41 and we have two at 43. So that would be a total of three. So this is how you read a dot plot. Hopefully that'll help. Tomorrow we'll be making dot plots based off of frequency tables. So you're gonna kind of get a double lesson tomorrow. And as always, 
This is Mrs. Bobby, and I love math and Diet Coke.